I'm going to go super fast. All right, we just finished posting assignment one, or we finished the demo on assignment one. Now we start unit five. We're going to be using compositing again, but this time we're going to do concept art, not for a setting, but for a creature. A creature head to toe. And it's going to be a fantasy creature. Our own original type of fantasy creature. Uh, I'm going to remind you that chapter two is the required reading to go with our next question of the day, which is part of this unit. And it's going to have to do with copyright concerns using other people's pixels. But we'll move through that for now. And our creature collage will have the option to animate them later. We start with a sketch. And this sketch is very different than the five parts with foreground, middle ground, background for our landscape. This sketch is trying to understand the silhouette of our fantasy creature. And I like to base it on inspiration. So the way I would start is to actually look at something like a Pokédex. So if you look at Pokémon designs, and there's over a thousand Pokémon, and some of them are terrible designs, but the original ones are great, and then some of the later ones are great. But what they all do well is if you squint really hard, you can still tell the kind of creature each one is. Whether they have hard edges, soft edges, whether they're four legs, two legs, floating, flying. And that's because of something called silhouette. If you see them as just a shadow, they already communicate. You can use any inspiration you like, but this is a great past student example that took this Pokemon as inspiration, right? And didn't look so much at all the individual parts of it. They really just looked at its silhouette and then tried to sketch that understanding the anatomy. So you sketch it, understanding where the head is, where the shoulders are, where the hips are, and then make little notes to yourself about what would be good to composite that with, right? So I can look at this and say, well, it looks like a porcupine, you know, with mole's feet. But you can get a little bit more creative than that. So instead of it being all animal features, maybe this is parts of a pine cone. Or would they ended up using kind of mountains and crystals to put it all together. So you can use my instructional demonstration videos from YouTube. You just want to look for assignment two in the playlist. And you'll get help with this sketching since we don't have a lot of time in class right now with it. But what I am going to be focused on, so assignment two, here we go. So here's something you could look at. I was inspired by this Pokemon, right? And then we came up with something. Uh, for this semester, I am inspired by something from a children's book. And it's going to be this guy. So that's the creature I want to make kind of a realistic fantasy version of. So that's what I'm going to be inspired by. So I'm going to show you really quick how I sketch that if you want to hang out for that. But we are at class time, so if you need to go, that's understandable. And then this will be in the video. So I'm just going to do a quick digital sketch. It will take about five minutes. I recommend that you sketch by hand unless you are incredibly comfortable with digital sketching. All right. So to digitally sketch, I'm just going to use my tablet, and I'm going to use my brush tool. And so I'm just going to use really just a standard setting, and I'm going to set my brush to be about 70% hardness and a decent size. There we go. All right. So the first thing I'm going to sketch to understand this creature is its skull, its cranium, the fishbowl that contains its brain. Right there. Then I'm going to find its spine. And it's kind of like an eggplant or a pear. Its spine just goes down and curves into a much bigger pelvis. Then its pelvis joint 
attaches there and there, and then the foot comes out like this, like this, and then big foot, like that. And then this foot goes down like this, like this, and then back. This helps me understand this silhouette. Then they have a mandible, and this is more like a beak. Right? It comes out from the cranium. And then it's got these kind of bat ears, right? That come out from the sides of the cranium. And then it's got really large eyes. It's also got these little kind of chicken wings at the sides. So what's nice about this, just like if I were looking at a Pokemon, this three-quarter view really shows me all of the anatomy in one silhouette. It's not a front view. It's not a side view. It's showing me everything. Now I get to think, what can I use? Well, it might be fun to use a hamster body. It might be fun to use, let's see, uh, what kind of feet? Maybe duck feet. And then I can start looking for reference as well. Uh, bat ears. And then I want something with really big expressive eyes. And I know from experience, chameleons have those. But there are lots of animals you could use, right? And then for the beak, with, with the teeth in it, well, maybe some sort of dinosaur toy, or maybe an, I'll just do an eagle. I can always add teeth in. But you need at least five, right? So that's five. One, two three, four, five. And I can start with that. And then I'm thinking these are going to be like uncooked chicken wings. <laughs> and that's where I need you to have for next class. Yeah, you can just sketch in your book. Okay. And that will help us know how to find reference and put it all together, just like we did with our landscape. Okay. So I'm going to save that and post it. So I'm sketching it digitally just so it's in the video. You can sketch it right in your sketchbook. And I'm basing it off a children's book. I recommend you search or you base it off a Pokemon design. I do have some of those in Photo P. Okay. But you can definitely choose from any kind of fantasy creature inspiration you have. It, yeah, it doesn't have to be. But find a good silhouette. Yeah, so if you want to do a Pegasus, if you want to do a Griffin, if you want to do like a, an alien from the movie Aliens, find a good silhouette of it that kind of shows it even if it was just a black cutout to sketch from. It can be any fantasy creature from anywhere. But Pokemon is a, a good choice from anywhere because their hero art you know, that goes on the cards really shows a lot of the creature's anatomy just in one pose. And it's always better to reference that because when you just draw from your own mind, you tend to not show all the anatomy of your ideas. All right, great.